Well, yeah, it's, it, for me, it's, it's uh, always just going back to what I learned, not only from my parents, my parents are, are great teachers, but every person in, in Musqueam is, is uh, connected to who we are, and, and the main place that we're connected to our culture is the Longhouse. Uh, we still go down there, and you learn a lot when you, when you go down there, and, and I think every time you go there, you, 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 you continue to learn. And it's about listening, and it's about uh, interacting with people, and, and um, making sure that all voices are heard, and uh, there is no back and forth, it's no, there's no arguing, it's about listening to people and taking that in and, and taking it into consideration. So uh, for me, when I go out uh, outside of our community, I, I try to use that as a, a template of, uh, of my approach to, to, uh, to other people and, and try to teach that to them as well, is that you know, some people may have different, differing opinions, but uh, it's, it's important to listen to them, take their, their considerations into into account and, and move forward in that way. We know that our potlatches were outlawed. We know that all the things that we did within our closed environment was looked at as a negative. And I was sitting one day in the longhouse by myself. The fire was on and a jet went over. In the open of the roof, you could see the jet actually going over. And I thought, wow, here we are in the space age. And I'm sitting in a longhouse in the city of Vancouver with a dirt floor and an open fire, being protected with the teaching of my people. And it hasn't been, it hasn't been devastated to the point where it's not a reality. I think with us, it's a lot of being brought up with our grandparents and in the long house. We connect with it a lot, with the long house, ceremonial stuff. Mm -hmm. dancing, singing. We just keep it alive with that and keep going on with our grandparents. Not only our grandparents, our aunties and uncles of the community, but they're teaching us till this day. And we just keep it alive like that and keep going the best we can. Mm -hmm. Family, I think, is, well, probably one of the most important things here, well, to me, and to most people, I would think, here in Musqueam, uh, because it is, it's, that's who you are. That's how you trace back who you are as a Musqueam person. Um, like I said, with, my, with the names that I carry, um, I can trace that back generation to generation and know who I am. And that's one thing that I always remember as well, being told, not just by my family, but other family members, um, when you go out and what you do in your life, it's not just it does not just affect does not just affect you. It's it's your people. You're representing your family, the community that you come from, the Coast Salish people. That's that is what's important. So when you go out there, you need to be proud of who you are and proud of where you come from, and be respectful of that because you're not just out there representing yourself. And even in everyday life, you know, when you go out and you're with friends or you're, you're at a meeting or whatever you're doing, um, when you introduce yourself, people most likely will know where you're from or a lot of times they're going to know who your family is. Um, that's another thing, even sitting in the longhouse, I, you know, I was brought up in the longhouse and I was always told that the people sitting across from you or on the other end, they may be from different communities, but if they know who your family is, they're going to know who your grandparents are, who your great-grandparents are. If they see you getting up and down, if they see you fooling around, if they see you not acting in a way that your grandmother would have taught you, then they're going to think that you weren't taught that way and that um, it, you're kind of making a fool of not just yourself but of your family. Well, as a younger guy now, just uh, turning 50, um, and listening to our history about leadership, it was it was all done by family groupings. Um, I had representatives there before the Indian Act, um, and every family had a had a voice. Um, I think it kind of goes similar along those lines now. Um, Musqueam always tries to make sure that our community is consulted and informed on any decisions that might affect our community as a whole, whether it's land issues, cash issues. Um, social issues, whatever it is, uh, it kind of follows along those same lines. Um, same as our contact with Vancouver Island bands, uh, Fraser bands, we, we try to, if we have issues, we try to go back into the longhouse and uh, 
and follow those um, leadership roles uh, that our uh, past chiefs and uh, leaders of our community did um, in the past. So um, don't have too much as uh, experience of our knowledge on on that, but that's what I've heard um, that there was always family um, houses uh, when decisions had to be made that the families would get together and make a decision as a community as in a whole. So um, I don't think that there has been much change. Um, we're really strong and rich on making sure that our community is looked after and. Um, even our existing council is, every time we sit at the council table and we're talking, it's, it's not necessarily for uh, today or tomorrow, it's for the future and make sure that our, our kids and grandkids and great grandkids are looked after. Again, I'm not speaking as a whole community. I'm just saying it's an important role and we hear in that longhouse because um, we're involved in certain sacred ceremonies that women have their role to carry through. But women also retain more of the stories, whether they be legends or stories just of Musqueam and how to carry oneself because, again, it all goes back to whether you had those puberty rights and people say, well, it's, it's just like, but it's got nothing to do with the big house. Once you get those protocols in line, you just followed those through. And that carries you through your whole life where um, it's not shot in a dark type thing. You know, everything, you processed everything in your mind before it rolled out of your tongue. And um, yeah, it was a woman's role to not only um, you know keep the household going. There was a whole lot of other issues that that where there is sole responsibility. A lot of the um, discipline was carried out by 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 the mother and the grandmother, more so grandparents, because though you know that they loved you and they were quite stern, and um, like I said, I didn't realize when I was young, I thought my grandmother hated me, but it wasn't until I was older that I appreciated what she did. Fishing is, is in our family, and um, the Fraser River meant in the summer that we were on the move. You know, Dad was fishing, Mom was working in canneries, and um, we went somewhere. We lived someplace else for a little bit, you know, Steveton or Ladner. And to me, it just, it's the most beautiful place in the world. I think the Fraser River is just beautiful. You know, you, see, you can sit there and just gaze off and you see all the beauty of the land there. That's where, you know, my sons carry on the tradition of hunting, same as their grandfather, my brothers. And uh, one time we used to go in and gather bulrushes for my mom so she could make mats. And it's just a beautiful place to be. Yeah, the hooligan. We used to go and catch the hooligan right out here when we were kids. We used to stand on the riverbank and dip net them. There were so many of them. We used to stand there and watch them. And our mom, our mom and our grandpa, my grandpa used to tell us, "Don't get too much. Just bring home a bucket or two, and we'll smoke it." And then, so my brothers and I used to go down there, and they, my grandpa used to make us little dip nets just out a piece of wire and we used to just stand there maybe for only about half an hour, fill up our buckets and come home. 